This is the sporting dog type with emphasis on grooming the American Cocker Spaniel and the English Spaniel, the English Springer Spaniel. This is a golden retriever named Rusty. And what you do with the golden, this dog has already been bathed and blown dry. And mainly what you do, let's do it, Kapoy, is you want to take your brush and come up all these little tufty hairs between the toes and just snip them off. You don't want to get into this hair here. You do want to trim the side of the toes and across the top of this back pad just a little bit. I'm put your foot down. Come on. Yeah, I need the other one. Good boy. Oh, good boy. All right. Shh, shh. Brush this up and just sniff these little house shoes looking off on the side of the pad here. All right, good boy. Come on, put your foot down. Good boy. I'm going to come back here on the schnauzers. This is called furnishings, and on the sporting dogs, this is called feathering. And all you want to do here is just blend this just a little bit down to the bottom of the toe. You're not taking hardly anything off, just these wispy ends, just to make it look nice and neat. Good boy, Rusty. We're going to do the same thing back here. And comb these little tufts up. You can either pick the foot up and do it, or you can do it on the back ones with the dog's foot down from the top. You do want to pick it up to do the back side of the foot. You want to take your comb, comb up the little hairs on the end of the hock here, and just scissor them smooth. There will be a little bit of a ridge right there, but that's okay. You want to scissor on either side of the toes, and then do the same thing to the other foot. All right. Boy, Rusty. I'm going to comb the hair on the hawk up, just like we did the other one. And just scissor it smooth. The grooming procedure for most of the setter and retriever type dogs are the first five fundamentals, fundamentals that we covered in the bathing and drying tape. <laughs> Rusty, get up. The hair on a golden retriever, as well as the setter, other setter type breeds, is called a plume. And you don't want to lose, stay, stay. You don't want to lose the shape of this plume, but you just want to neaten up the jagged edges here. Stay, stay. And you just take your scissor and just lightly snip away the ragged ends. Come on, Rusty. Come on, hop up. Good boy. Stay. I know, I got you. I got you. Stay. 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 Good boy, I got you. You do very little with the, fern the feathering back here. Occasionally, if you have a dog with this type coat, You'll have a client request that you do remove some of this hair because it tends to catch debris and things back here. This dog doesn't have an excessive amount of hair here, so we're not going to do anything to this. In the event that the dog did have a lot of hair here, you would just lift the tail up and scissor where the rosettes are, just like we did on the schnauzer and like the lamb trim on a poodle. You just want to scissor a little bit of this away just to make it smooth so it doesn't catch things. You can take these little pieces off right here. I'm going to do the same thing on this other front leg that I did on that one. Just take the wispy ends off behind the, on the feathers. Good boy. Yeah. Most of the grooming procedure on retriever and setter type dogs you've done before you groom the dog. I mean, before you bathe the dog. The only thing you want to do afterward is just trim its feet and its tail and its rear a little bit. After the dog has been bathed and blown dry, the hair will be soft so it'll stand up. What? 
this is basically all you do to a golden or any dog with this type coat. There's a lot of mixed breed dogs that are coated like this and you, the grooming procedure is the same for them as well. Good boy, Rusty. Good. This is the sporting dog tape with emphasis on grooming the English Springer Spaniel and the American Cocker Spaniel. This is an English Springer and we're going to start with his head. This is a 12 year old dog too, so if you notice him panting or having a little trouble standing up, that's why. I'm using an eight and a half blade and I'm very lightly just going to take off this dog's whiskers. I'm not digging way into the coat on his face. I'm just taking off the tiny little hairs that stick up on the muzzle, mainly the whiskers. And the same thing on this bottom lip here. You wanna hold these lips up just like we did the poodle so you don't get any of this loose skin in this blade. And you wanna just lightly take off the whiskers and anything that sticks out along his lips. But you don't wanna dig way into the coat. Cockers and Springer's hair will clipper, make marks with a clipper real easily. So you wanna try and leave hair without digging in real deeply to try to avoid that situation. Very lightly, I'm just skimming the top of this dog's head so I don't make marks with the clipper. And it's just to remove the wispy little hairs that are sticking up on top. I hear you. Yeah. We'll do the same thing on the cheeks of this dog. Just lightly skim over this. This eight and a half blade works great on cockers and springers because of the texture of their hair. It's all right, old man. I'm scoot up just a little bit. Scoot up, good boy. You'll notice inside this dog's ear how red and irritated it is. He has a skin condition. It's like a fungus on his skin and that also affects the inside of a lot of dogs' ears that have drop ears. When we bathed this dog earlier, we used a medicated shampoo. I used the tar sulfur shampoo on this dog and I let him soak in it for about 10 minutes before I rinsed it off. I'm still using the eight and a half blade, just coming down the dog's neck to his breastbone. Good boy, Gus. It's okay to get into this stuff on the side of his neck because we're going to use this blade on that also. I'm going to do his neck and then I'm gonna put his head back in the noose so I can show you how to do his ears. You wanna come down in front, not quite as far as we did on the schnauzers and the terriers, just to these rosettes right here. You don't wanna clipper them off just yet. Good boy. Come on. Good boy, girl. I'm gonna do the same thing on this side of the dog's neck. Lift up the ear and take all this off on the neck. That's a good boy. You can also lightly use this blade to get rid of the little eyebrows, the little hairs that grow above their eyebrows. You don't wanna dig in deep. You just wanna get those little hairs off. Still using the same blade, I'm gonna pick up the dog's ear and come right up the side of the ear and take off hair on the inside of this dog's ear. You don't wanna do the whole leather like we did on the schnauzer. You wanna do the upper third of the ear. And same thing up here. 
going with the direction the hair grows, I'm gonna use this eight and a half, but then I'm gonna come back with the 15 and smooth it up. You wanna be real careful on the edge of the dog's ear with this blade because it is a skip tooth blade and it's easy to get it, the ear leather in the blade. This is a 15 blade. Come on, old man. I'm gonna go with the grain of the hair again and clipper the back of the dog's ear where the ear turns to go into the head, you can go against the grain, but be real careful once again because that little flap of skin is right there. Now I'm going to go against the grain and clipper the upper portion of this dog's ear. It's about the top third of the ear. You have to be real careful not to get skin in this blade as you're doing this. Spaniel and Retriever type dogs have real loose skin on their ears and it's easy to get it in the blade, even with the 15 as close as the teeth are. And come right along the edge of the ear. Boy. When dogs have fungusy ears like this, the skin is real hard and it's bumpy and it's real easy to get pieces of it in your clipper blade. So you wanna be extremely careful not to irritate that area. We cleaned his ears out with R7 and towel dried them really good, really well. Come on, turn around. There's a bend in the first part of the dog's ear leather right here. That's usually where I clip her to, just below that, on cockers and springers. Sometimes if the dog has a great deal of hair on the ear, you can take your scissor afterward and just hold, brush the ear and then scissors straight down into this a little bit so it'll lay flat. You don't want this huge, curly, fluffy ear. It's very important when you're drying these dogs' ears to get them as straight as you can. And then I'm gonna do this ear. I'm still using a 15 blade just on the inside of this dog's ear. You might want to use a 10 blade on springers because the hair on their ears is not real, real thick and it's real easy to nick them with a 15 blade until you're comfortable using your clipper. I would start out using a 10. I'm gonna get most of the length off of this with the eight and a half. Doing the back of this ear just like I did the other one. I'm gonna change back to my 15 blade. Come right down the dog's ear. Good boy, Gus. Hold your little head up. Very carefully come along the edge of the ear. These dogs usually have thicker ear leathers than the terrier type dogs. But you still wanna be careful when you're running your clipper along the edge of the ear not to get it.
Now I'm gonna go back with my eight and a half blade. <clears throat> just at the top of the ear here, I'm gonna go against the grain and just turn this into the top of the dog's head because it blends it, it makes it smooth. There's not a ridge from the two differences in blade length. It's okay to see skin when you do the top of this dog's ear. They grow hair fast, and that'll cover back over in a day or two. We're gonna blend the top of this ear. Now I'm gonna go back down this dog's neck. He has all this loose skin that I referred to earlier. All right. With the eight and a half blade, I'm going with the way the hair grows under here and I'm just going to smooth this up. Good yeah, boy, gosh. <clears throat> Boy. Stand up for me. Come on. Old dogs don't have the stamina to stand like a younger dog does, and a lot of times they're going to sit down on you, and that's fine. Sometimes you'll take your hand and just literally hold their bottom up while you're clipping their back and sides because they just can't stand for you to do that. All right. So you want to work as quickly as you can on an old dog so they're not uncomfortable for very long. I'm using the eight and a half blade. All right. I'm gonna come right down this dog's shoulder, right to the arm in front. Again, right where the elbow is, I'm just going to fall off with the clipper blade, not getting into the feathering. <clears throat> come on, old man, it's okay. You don't go quite as far down on a Springer's sides as you do on, a, on the Terrier's. On the, on the shoulder, you do go down to where the elbow is, but just behind the shoulder, you wanna just sort of blend this into his rib spring here. It's all right to go a little, you can go as low as this on pet grooming because sometimes that's where it's, bet, it's easier to blend it right there because the hair starts to lie straight right there. You just don't want to leave any harsh lines. All right, old boy. I'm not digging in with this clipper blade real deep. I'm just taking off some of this top coat. And just real lightly, I'm coming down into the dog's side so there's not a harsh line across here. Most of the time I use an eight and a half. Occasionally I'll use a seven F on springers and cockers. It just depends on coat depth and thick and texture of coat. Good boy, guys. No, that's itchy. And come down the hips just a little bit. All right. Just enough to where you can blend this into the sides.
And the tip area is supposed to be fairly smooth. You don't want to dig way in because you're going to come back with your scissor and blend this. Good boy, Gus. We're going to come right down to the back and, and clipper the tail with the same blade. you have a dog like this that has any type of skin condition, this is usually their favorite area to chew in or chew on. And you're going to run into some areas where the hair is really thin and it's just because it, the skin is scarred from chewing and making hot spots. So when you clip her over it, there's going to be some places that are pretty close, but that's okay. All right. I'm going to come right around here underneath the tail with the same blade and lift up the tail very lightly. Come on, old man. Come on. Clipper his tail and underneath the tail. Again, you just go with the grain of the hair underneath the tail. Just take the hair off the end of the tail. Sometimes you can use your scissor to do that. A lot of times on breeds that have tails that are docked, there's a little bit of a bald spot right there that is scar tissue from where the stitch was. And instead of taking your clipper and completely taking all of that hair off, you can come back with your scissor <laughs> and snip that little piece of hair off of there. Otherwise, it's gonna make a great big hole on the end of the tail and it doesn't look very nice. All right, old boy, I'll help you. Come on, hop up. Come on. Uh. I'm gonna go ahead and do the other side of this dog's rear so he can sit. Come on. I guess, come on. Come just underneath the tail here and lightly clip her to, to the rosettes behind. And do the same thing on the other side. When you're clippering this type of coat, you want to try to make as many continuous strokes as you can because if you stop and start in the middle of, do of this dog's back with real straight hair like this, it's going to make clipper marks. Sometimes it can't be helped, but you want to try to avoid them if you can. All right, oh boy, I got you. Cocker and Springer hair will clog up your clip, clipper bait blades quicker than most any other hair will. It's the hardest on them. All right, I got you. When you do pick up your blip clipper and start in the middle of the dog's back, you don't want to dig into the hair with your blade. You want to lay your blade flat and just continue on. Your blade should always be flat against the dog's skin. You never want to just dig in. You also have to watch out for moles and warts on old dogs. This dog has a big mole right here in the middle of his back, and you don't want to just clip her through it. You clip her over it.
unless it's a dog that you groom regularly and know where all of those warts and moles are, chances are good you're going to nick some, but you just want to be very careful when you can and try to avoid doing that. It's not unusual for most old dogs to have those. Good boy. I'm coming right down this dog's shoulder to his elbow, just like I did on that side. Good boy, Gus. I'm going to go over this dog's body with a seven blade just to skim over a little bit of the rough places. <clears throat> These type dogs have a real thick undercoat and a lot of times it hangs up in the clipper blades and it's hard to get a real smooth finish on them. So after you've been over the dog with your eight and a half, sometimes you can come back over it with your seven and hit a few areas that your eight and a half wouldn't get. Or vice versa, if you're using a seven F, sometimes you can go back over it and skim over it with an eight and a half to get some areas that your seven missed. I'm not getting deep into this, I'm just blending this a little bit. All right, oh boy, I got you. come back around up here to the front of this dog so he can sit and rest for a minute. I'm going to take my scissor and just trim right along the edge of this dog's ear leather just to get the wispy little ends. Same thing across the back. The same thing on the back side of this ear. Boy, yeah. Now we leave more hair on the Springer and Setter type dogs, Spaniel type dogs, in front than you do on a Terrier. You don't want to go all the way down into this because they're supposed to have this here. After you've clippered down to the leg, the elbow in front, the top of the leg, you can take your scissor and just snip right here just to blend a little bit. But they, they're supposed to have most of that hair there. And it starts from the dog's breastbone, and depending on the age and the coat texture, I mean, sometimes Springer, Springers will have hair nearly to the floor in front there, as well as ears that are a lot longer than this. Next thing you want to do is comb up all this hair on their feet. All right. And do the same thing that we did on the Golden, is snip off the house shoes. Springer's foot is to look almost cat-like in appearance. It's all right, old boy. Come on. Come on. Come on. Good boy. I'm going to do the same thing on the back side of the foot. Come on. 
this area of hair from this little pad that is up behind the pastern to the foot needs to be clean. You just take your scissor. It's all right. I'm turning. Okay. It's all right. And go ahead and scissor that off up to that little pad. And you want to come back with your comb and comb the feathering down and taper this to what you've just scissored off below the pastern. This dog's furnishings are kept pretty short, but it's not unusual on a Springer to have long, really long hair back here. And on request of the customer, you can trim it short like this. A lot of people want that done to keep leaves and debris from getting caught in the feathering. Also, another popular trim for springers in the summer is what we call a summer clip or a strip, and that is just to completely shear the whole dog with the eight and a half. Usually, they'll want you to leave the ears, but everything else comes off with an eight and a half blade. We're going to do the same thing with his back leg here, back foot. It's all right, old man. I got you. It's all right. Come on, I got you. Good boy. You'll also sometimes find little tangles, little tiny mats in between their toes. And you can either stand here and from above cut them off. You wanna be careful not to snip their feet because they do have webbed toes. Or you can do it holding it the dog up. Since this dog is so old, I'm gonna try and let him stand as much as he can or sit. Because they tire easily. I'll hold you up. I got you. I got you. With this hair on the hawk, you want to trim that off to where it's nice and smooth, just like we did on the golden. All right. You just take the hawk and your scissoring right next to the skin. I got you, I got you, I got you, I don't know. And come right up the inside of the back of the leg here with a scissor and get the hair off the inside of the hawk. It's all right, old boy, I got you, I got you, I got you. Usually you don't get into the furnishings a lot with your scissor unless it's at the customer's re or your client request. Stay. If a dog has really long furnishings back here, sometimes you can take your scissor and just scissor along the outline of the leg and just neaten up the wispy ends. But they pretty much want to leave it. And the same thing back here. All right. You can take your scissor and remove these little wisps just under the tail. But the hair back here is pretty much left as well. I'm gonna do the same thing with this leg over here. Come on, I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. Oh boy. I'm mostly supporting this dog with this hand that I'm holding this leg up with. Wanna sit? That's okay. Come on. Come on, there you go. Come on. All right, Gus, let me just do the back of your leg there. I'm going to do the same thing with this hawk as I did with the other one. 
scissor is just flat against the hot. All right. Come on. Almost through here, Bowie. Come on, hop up. Just for a minute. Good boy. After you've scissored the hot, <clears throat> you can take this hair that's right here and taper it just a little bit. So it's not just a big definition from where you've scissored and what hasn't been scissored. Just lightly, just blend that in. Just taper it just a little bit. All right, Bobby, you want to sit? Come on, you can sit. Come on. I got gotcha. you. There you go. And we're going to do the same thing on this foot. Here, I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. Okay. Appearance you're after is a cat's foot. It's all right, old man. Come on, come on. All right. I'm gonna scissor tightly right here and above the big pad, right up to this smaller pad just behind the pastern. Okay. Same thing on his furnishings here behind his foot. We're just going to taper this to, to where it blends into where we've just scissored the pastern. You'll find that most people with springers are going to want their furnishings about this length because it still gives the appearance of a regular Springer trim, but it's just easier for them to maintain. You can also take your clipper and with your eight and a half blade clipper from behind this little pad right here down if you want to. Can't really do it with a seven because of the way the teeth are, but an eight and a half works pretty well to do that. I hear you, old Bowie. I hear you. And sometimes you'll have a client ask you to trim a dog's ears. I'm going to trim these just a little bit because there's some scraggly ends. These dogs' ear leathers are pretty big and they're pretty round right here, so I just sort of follow the shape of the leather. You don't want to take it all off, but just trim just some of these scraggly little ends a little bit. And follow the shape of the leather. Good boy. A springer spaniel looks like when it's groomed. I also want to demonstrate real quick how to lift a dog onto the table. I've mentioned about not letting a dog jump off of the table or fall off the table. But I want to show you how you put one on. A lot of big dogs will jump up and put their front feet on the table with you and that's good because then all you have to do is lift their bottom. 
This dog has a bad back as well as bad skin, so you don't want to just reach under and grab him because you're going to make his back bend where it normally wouldn't. So you put one hand under here, and if the dog is this size, you can put your other hand between his two front legs and pick him up. That way his back is not bent, and there's not any undue stress in this area. And you, when you take him down, you hold the dog the same way. On a large dog, as I said earlier, a lot of times they'll put their front feet up on the table for you. And what you do is bend down and put your hand under the dog's stomach. And with this hand, put it between his two back legs and just hoist the dog up on the table. If the dog is too heavy for you to pick it up by yourself, Get someone to help you if there's someone there. If not, you, the best thing to do is to try to teach it to put his front feet up for you. Usually when I do that, I'll have a dog with his front feet here, and I'll put my hand on the dog's neck, and I'll lift up the bottom like this so the table doesn't move and the dog is not scrabbling everywhere, moving the table. This is what a Springer Spaniel looks like. And this grooming will also apply to all of the, most of the spaniel type breeds. I'm going to show you a cocker next. That's a little bit different, but the setters and the springers are groomed like this. This is the American Cocker Spaniel, and her name is Freckles. Come on, Freckles. I'm going to start with her head. I'm using an eight and a half blade again. You can see that this dog has a good bit of hair on its cheeks here, so we're gonna go ahead and clipper this off. We're not gonna lightly skim it. I mean, we're really going to clipper it off. We're gonna dig into this a little bit. But we're gonna lightly get the whiskers off of her mouth. Come on. I'm going to go whisk the way the hair grows here, right over the top of her eye to get those little whiskers off up there. And first, I'm going to go whisk the way the hair grows on her cheeks, and then I'm going to come back. Not, I'm not going to come back and do the whole cheek against the grain, just this part under the eye where this really thick part is sticking up. Cockers do not have hair in their ears, and neither do Springer Spaniels. There are a lot of breeds that have, especially sporting dogs, that have drop ears that do not have hair in their ears, but you always want to check because occasionally you'll get one that has a few, but for the most part, there is no hair in their ears. I'm going to hold her mouth and do the other side of her face, just like I did that side. Stay freckles. Right up over the eye. And down her cheek. I'm going to come back against the grain just along the edge of the lip and this area right here underneath the eye just to make it smooth. Okay. Stay. Next, I'm going to do her neck area. I'm going to come right down here to the breastbone again and then stop. We're going to do the front of this dog just like we did the Springer. Not quite as severe as the Terriers, but you do want to come down the front of the chest here to the leg. And I'm going to come back up and do the top of this dog's head. 
Cockers have a crown, this little area of hair right here, just above the stock is called a crown. And you, wanna don't, you don't wanna clipper all of that off. You wanna start just behind that because you're gonna come back with your scissor and smooth up the rough ends there. I'm going to do a couple of trims with this dog. This is, this is a regular cocker trim. And then I'm going to put her in a summer cut or a strip. You'll find with most of your cocker clients that during the colder months, they want the dog in a regular cocker trim. But during the summer months, they want them stripped. Oh, yeah, good girl. I'm going to use this eight and a half all over this dog's body, just like I did with the Springer. Stand up for me. Good girl. This dog's hair is extremely thick. And even though I'm using an eight and a half, there's still going to be small little ridges in this coat. All right, good girl. I'm gonna come right down the shoulder. Not quite, come on, not quite to the elbow. About halfway down to the elbow here. And then I'm gonna stop. We're gonna come down her side and leave the skirt here. <clears throat> Stay freckles. Good girl. Good girl, freckles. Do her tail with the same blade. A lot of times cockers are real touchy about their back end and will require muzzling to be able to do the tail. I've found in 13 years of pet grooming that cockers are the most often muzzled breed. They're extremely sensitive dogs. They get their feelings hurt real easily. You'll also find with this breed that occasionally they'll tend to urinate or defecate in the bathtub or on the grooming table. It's just because they get nervous. They're just extremely sensitive. There's no need to yell at the dog or anything for doing that because it's just really mainly nerves that make it do it. So just clean it up and go on with what you're doing. Don't ever be afraid to use a muzzle. If you think the dog is going to bite, then muzzle it. You'll be a lot happier and so will the dog. A lot of times if a dog can't use its mouth to bite, it seems to be a little calmer. Not always, but in most cases, it really seems to make a difference. When you do the hips on a cocker, you don't want to go way down into the furnishing or the feathering, but you do want to do the hip area itself. You can, again, feel this muscle right here, and this is what you're clippering. You want to come down just a little bit lower in the middle of it so there's not a harsh line, like, straight across here. Come on, Freckles. 
Good girl. Good girl. Just under the rectal area, you want to clip her just a little bit. You want to don't want to dig way down into the feathering there, but just to smooth that off a little bit. The next thing we're going to do, I'm going to use my 15 blade or 10 blade. Come on, come on, good girl. I'm going to clip her. You can see the upper third of this dog's ear has been clippered. We're going to do the same thing with this ear that we did with the Springer. Freckles, stay. When you're clippering behind a dog's ear, this area right here is prone to clipper burn more so than anywhere else on the dog. So you want to be extremely careful in clippering that area. A lot of times dogs will scratch this area after it's been clippered and irritate it. One thing I've found to, u to use that seems to help a lot in aiding against clipper burning, if you have a dog that you groom that you know is prone to that, if you'll take men's aftershave, doesn't matter what brand, and put it on that area after it's been clippered. It seems to soothe the skin. There are also some products made by Outright and BioGroom that are supposed to prevent that too. And any of those, of course, can be purchased through Vanity Fur. I'm going to, all right, I'm going to clipper a good ways down the inside of this dog's ears because she has a lot of hair on her ears. And it aids in keeping them clean while it still gives the appearance of a regular cocker ear. I'm going to do the same thing to this ear. Come on, Freckles. Cockers can also be very vocal about their grooming. It's not unusual to have one crying and sometimes screaming while you're doing certain areas on the dog. And again, it's just because they're just extremely sensitive dogs. But if you just talk to them, be easy with them, you can usually pretty much soothe them. I never tranquilize animals to be groomed. I have on occasion had a client bring me a dog that has been tranquilized. I don't like to work on them because, stop. You can't really groom them. All you can, freckles, and lay down. All you can do to a tranquilized dog basically is strip it. Just cut the hair off of it all over its body. Do the best you can with its face and you have to work quickly because as the tranquilizer wears off, they tend to be a little nasty. And you can rest assured if it's tranquilized, it's very nasty without it. You can't do it without it being done. But hardly, I mean, I've never recommend people doing that, but some groomers do. And you never want to administer that yourself. You always want to let them take the dog to the vet prior to coming to your shop. And usually what I do with a tranquilized animal is as soon as I get it there, is I do whatever clipper work I'm going to do with it. You work quickly. Do the best you can, as fast as you can. Freckles. And then after you bathe the dog, usually the bath will start to bring the dog out of its stupor. And most of the time, you're not able to blow dry it. If you're in a shop situation and you put the dog in a drying cage, then that's generally all you're able to do with it after that. So you want to do as much to it before the bath as you can. 
And you also need to be aware that on occasion when a dog is coming out of anis out of a being tranquilized, they will seizure on you. Poodles and Maltese are bad about seizuring. And what you do is if, if you should have a dog go into seizure when you're grooming it, just stop what you're doing and sit down and just hold the dog and just love on it until it comes out of the seizure. Just make sure the dog is okay. If you don't think you can handle that, then get a, either get a vet to you or quickly get to the vet. It doesn't happen very often, but occasionally it does. Sometimes you're able to go on and finish what you're doing, but most of the time, if I have a dog that seizures, I just quit for the day with that dog and then have them bring it back another day and finish it so they can go to the vet just to make sure if they're, the client is aware that the dog seizures and they have medication for it, then they're used to dealing with that, but on occasion that's going to happen. After you've clippered the ear, you want to take your scissor just along the edge here and just snip those loose little ends again and the same thing along the back. And Cocker's ears are just like Springer ears. There's a little piece of the leather that folds and I usually clip her down just below where that little piece of skin folds over. Good girl, Freckles. Now with this crown on top of the dog's head, I comb it forward and I just scissor straight across in front and then I comb it back and there's a definite line right here, like a half moon where the hair was in the clipper and where it wasn't. And I just take my scissor and just very lightly just snip the ends just to blend that. Some customers will ask you to take that off and that's fine. Some clients also will ask, Cocker Spaniels tend to grow extremely long eyelashes, I mean like inch or two long eyelashes, and the, the client wants that, so if they ask you to leave them, then do so. On a cocker, you don't generally trim much underneath here. You just let the hair fall as it would unless your client asks you to trim that off. I'm going to scissor their feet nice and round, not particularly short. You want to blend them with the length of the leg. There are about a million variations of ways to do Cocker Spaniels. This, what I'm showing you is just like a regular Cocker Spaniel trim. Customers ask you to do all kinds of things with them. Some Cockers that aren't very heavily feathered or don't have a very thick coat will have real straight hair along the back of the dog. And if that's the case, you can leave it and not clipper it because that's the appearance you're after to begin with. What you can do is just take your clipper, your eight and a half blade, and clipper the head and lightly come down the neck and blend the stuff that sticks up. There's sometimes there'll be little wispy ends on the shoulders. Just blend that in to the rest of this coat. Most of your pet cockers have a pretty good amount of hair, but you do run across some that don't have very much. And there's really no point to clipper that off because that's the appearance you're after anyway. The cockers that you see that have real straight coat like that on their body coat generally do not have much hair on their legs and they have very little undercoat. It's mostly just the long guard hairs.
Good girl, Freckles. Good girl. Huh? Cockers will be one of the dogs you see the most of. It's a nice, neat little foot. Sometimes you can take your scissor. There's this little stuff right here on the front of her leg that's sticking out. Put your foot down. Like these little short hairs that are sticking straight out, you can just take your scissor and hold it parallel to the dog's body and scissor those little wispy ends off. You'll find that You'll find that the thicker the dog's hair is, the more furnishings it's going to have. That holds true for most any breed, but especially in cockers. Stop. You'll also find that generally the party colors, which is what this is, have less hair than the blacks or the black and tans or the solid color dogs. This dog is sort of an exception. She has a lot of hair. But in general, the party colors have straighter hair, and they don't have quite as much. Stay. Uh, 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 uh. Come on, stay. I'm scissoring parallel to the hawk inside this dog's back legs. Similar to the A-frames that we have done on the other dogs, but you don't want to get Come on, Freckles. Good girl. You don't want to get up into in, up into this. I had clippered her tummy, but you don't want to get way up into that underneath. What you do is just scissor this a little tighter in here so they don't drag as much stuff in on their legs, but it still has a fluffy, full appearance. Good girl, Freckles. He's a good girl. And of course, depending on how long the furnishings are or how short you're trimming them will determine how close you're going to trim the dog's feet. Come on. Good girl. Come on. Of freckles. You don't want to get way up into the hair behind the big pad, behind the, above the big pad behind the pastern, because then you lose the effect of these round little feet and legs. But you do want to trim it so there's not a lot of straggly hair sticking up down there. Come on. Good girl. I'm going to show you a couple of tricks here that will aid you in grooming as well as your cocker clients in maintaining what you've done. This is a regular cocker trim. Normally, you don't get into any of this hair up underneath the dog. But in this dog's case, she has a lot of hair. So you can take your clipper with your 10 blade or your 15 blade. I'm not going to clip her the sides off, but what I'm going to do is clip her in between the sides underneath. And it still gives the appearance that the dog is in a regular cocker trim, but it helps the client because there's not as much hair underneath there to mat and get dirty. And it also is a little cooler on the dog in the summer if they don't want to do a summer cut or a strip. All right, good girl, Freckles. You don't want to go all the way up the chest area. Wait, wait, wait. 
but you can clean a bunch of that up underneath. Normally what we would clipper would be just this area right in here. But you can see that I've clippered okay, nearly all the way up her stomach because she has a great deal of hair underneath there. And it just helps keep the dog cooler if they want to leave it long in summer and it also keeps debris and stuff from collecting there. Next thing we're gonna do with this dog is what is called a summer clip or a strip. I referred to stripping a dog earlier in a couple of the tapes. If you get a dog that's badly matted to the point of you not being able to brush it out and a dog has been neglected for several months or a year, you can't do anything to it until you get the coat off. And <clears throat> depending on how badly the dog is matted determines what blade you're going to use. The blades don't go through the mats, they go under them. So if a dog is matted to the skin, there's a good chance you're going to end up using a 7F, an 8.5, and, and sometimes even a 10 on the entire dog's body. And this, this is a summer cut or a strip. And I'm using my 8.5 blade. I'm going to leave her ears. Sometimes they'll have you take everything off the ear, down, just down to the leather. And when you do that, you do just like we've done up here. Just clip it all off and then take your scissor or your clipper and just neaten up the wispy ends around the, the leather. Yeah. There are also different degrees of summer clip. You can use, I'm going to use, I'm going to use a five blade to show you. And this is what an eight and a half is. Obviously, a five blade won't be as short as a seven F or an eight and a half, but it's still short enough to get this hair off where the dog is able to go swimming or just be cooler. It's also easier. I recommend to a lot of people in the summer that do things with their dogs, like take them to the lake and camping and stuff to put them in a summer clip because it's easier on them. They don't have the hair to maintain, the mat, and it's also easier for maintenance, flea maintenance. I'm using a five blade because as this starts to grow out, this area, her legs and her stomach will be just a little bit longer than her body coat. So as it grows out, it'll look like a regular cocker trim. Some people will have you use the eight and a half over the whole body. When, you, when they tell you that they want a summer clip, ask them exactly what they want. Ask them if they want the dog's body and the legs to be the same length, or ask them if they want the body to be sh short and the legs to be a, a little longer. Come on, Freckles. Come on, you're all right. Come on. You see me put dog's ears up in the noose a lot. You can also take a rubber band and band, put a band and put the ears up on top of the dog's head, you just have to make sure that the band is not too tight. But if I'm scissoring in the, in between the front legs or the chest area, sometimes I need to be able to see that and you can't really see that with ears hanging there. Good girl. Also on cockers and dogs that are heavily coated like this, when you're doing like a regular cocker trim on them, you can take your clipper blade and without getting into this chest hair, just lift up the arm and just clipper the dog's armpit. Because that's an area that mats the most when a dog walks. That hair is different lengths under there and it tends to tangle and get matted easily. Uh-uh, come on. 
Say, freckles. This dog is groomed on a regular basis, and I keep her this way in the summer, and during the winter months, they let her grow out to a regular cocker trim. We don't let her legs grow completely full. We keep them the length that you just saw before I started clippering them off. It's about two inches long, and I never let them get any longer than that. Cause this bitch would grow hair to the floor if we let her. And being a white and light colored dog, it's hard to keep them clean. To show you how fast this dog grows hair, the last time I did this to her was less than three months ago. It was about two and a half months ago. I did this summer cut on her. This is a lot of hair in that short amount of time. We do take her ears off in the summer because this dog gets in the swimming pool every day. And so the owner doesn't have to deal with the hair on the ears. We just clip her the whole ear with an eight and a half. The other thing you always want to remind your client of is when you're, you, this is what you mostly do in the summer is strips or summer cuts. But before you do this to any dog, especially dogs that stay outside year round, you want to make sure that a dog has a shady place to get into in the summer because dogs can sunburn and heat stroke real easily, especially like when their hair is this short because there's not a lot of hair to keep cool air next to their body. And white dogs especially can sunburn, so you want to make sure that they have a shady area for the dog to get into. And you want to try not to strip a dog in the winter if you can help it, if it's an outside dog. But unfortunately, sometimes people, sometimes people wait until the coldest months of the year to decide to get their outside dog groomed, and you don't have any alternative but to just get the hair off because it's so matted, because it hasn't been done for 12 months. Come on, Freckles, stay. Come on, baby. Good girl. Come on. Freckles. Just like when you're brushing a dog before its bath, you want to be systematic and methodical about clippering, too. You don't want to start up here and then move around over here and move around over there. Whatever area you start in, you want to continue on. Sometimes you'll have a dog that just doesn't want you to do that particular leg or that particular foot. And in the event of a situation like that, I will move on to another area and come back to that because it seems like if you go and do something else, 
and come back to that later, you're able to do it. But most of the time, you want to just start in one area and go from there. Come on, Freckles. Come on. Good girl. I oh, know you don't like your legs done. Also, when you're stripping a badly matted dog, like a once a year dog, you're going to find some really awful things in the coat sometimes. I've found fish hooks in two different dogs before, and the people have just had no idea that they were there because the coat was so matted. You couldn't even begin to feel them with your hand, but they, on one occasion, it was stuck into the dog's side, and it was a pretty nasty sore. And on the second occasion, it was just in the coat. You'll find lots of parasites and sometimes some really disgusting sores under there, but you got to get that hair off so they can get that dog to the vet and get it, start getting it healed up. And you certainly, anytime you find anything on a dog, you want to bring it to the client's attention. A lot of times when you're grooming a dog, when you lift the tail area, you're going to find tapeworm segments. And on a lot of dogs that have dew claws, you're going to find where the dew claw has, come on freckles, not been cut in so long that it's grown back into that little toe there. And that's extremely painful. Sometimes you're able to clip it yourself, but if it's really bad, it's got to be done by the vet because they have to sometimes knock them out a little bit to do it. I mean, I've, I've seen some really awful dew claws like that before. Besides the fact that it's extremely painful, and generally it takes a pair of pliers to pull it once it's been cut. Usually when I find something like that, I, I have the client take the dog to the vet. Freckles, stop. Nope. Come on, don't be a cocker. Come on. Come on. Nope, nope. Come on. Good girl. Freckles. As I was mentioning earlier, sometimes there's an area that they just don't want you to do. All right, good girl. But you just have to experiment and try different ways to hold the dog to get it done. Good girl. Back off that table. Come on. Now what I'm going to do is take my scissor. And you can see these feet now look like house shoes. They were scissored in proportion with the dog's legs before I clippered them off. But now we're going to scissor them in proportion with this summer cut or strip. Same kind of trim, just a little shorter. You always want everything to be as pro in proportion as you can when you're grooming dogs. If you're doing, if you've got real short legs like this on a dog, you don't want to leave great big feet that look like house shoes. And if you're doing a poodle in a summer cut clip or a strip or just a real short trim, you don't want to leave this great big long top knot and great big long tail on them because it blows the whole silhouette. Good girl. Come on. Come on. You're all right. I know. Another good thing to do is your gaining clients is to always write down what you do every time the dog comes in on a history card so you can look at that and know exactly what you did to that dog. So when the client comes in and says, do her just exactly like you did last time, you'll know what you did.
And as you change patterns on a dog, like in the summer, this dog's card says eight and a half summer clip. or 7F summer clip, depending on which blade you use. And in the colder months, usually about September is the last time that we do this dog in a summer clip. So when I go in October, then it says eight and a half regular cocker. Good girl, Freckles. All I'm doing with the scissor is just taking off these wispy little ends. The five blade leaves the hair a little longer. You don't want it smooth, smooth like the body. Otherwise, we would have used an eight and a half. It does allow a little bit of length on the legs, but you just want to take off the little wispy ends. Be real careful right here because there's that little loose skin there in front of the loin. Good girl. Always have your client describe exactly what they want you to do to the dog. Don't go by whatever name of the clip they give you. Have them describe it exactly. Because you're going to find... You can have 10 cocker people come in in a row, as well as poodle people, and tell you, the name, tell you 10 different names for the same clip. And I always ask them, just show me exactly what you want. And they'll say, I want it short here and long here or whatever. Then you know that's a regular cocker trim. You might ask them, do they want the legs trimmed? Or, and if so, how much do you want trimmed off? Anytime they want something trimmed, ask them how long they want the length to be when you've trimmed it. A good girl. Yep. Good girl, Freckles. Good girl. Yeah, I see ya. Sometimes you can take your scissor and just snip the ends of a few of these little whiskers that you miss when you're clippering. Dogs can lay their whiskers down when you're clippering, and sometimes you'll miss some. Stay. Come on. Stay. Good girl. Come on. Good girl. This is a summer clip or a strip. If a dog is badly matted, you call this a strip. Usually, so I can tell the difference on my cards, I'll put summer clip if it was, didn't have to be done because of matting. If it has to be done because you have no choice, then write it down as a strip. Basically, it's the same trim, but that lets you know that you had to do it or you chose to do it. In closing, the Springers and the Cocker Spaniels are pretty much groomed the same, with the exception of the, the feathering on their legs, and that's even on both of those breeds, it's going to depend on how much hair each dog has, each individual dog has. This strip will apply to any breed of dog. It's more commonly done to the Springers and um, Cocker Spaniels and anything that's heavily coated in the summer. But if you get a Poodle or a Chow or a Malamute or anything like that, anything that has a great deal of hair can be stripped. And generally, when you refer to an animal being stripped, it's because you didn't have a choice. A lot of people will say, I want to strip it for the summer, but I usually write it down as summer cut because then I know that the dog was in good shape. They just wanted it really short for summer. If you use strip, then you know you didn't have a choice. And on the, the, a lot of the other sporting breeds, like the Golden Retriever that we did, that grooming also applies to most of the rest of the setters and the retriever type dogs, most of them are short haired, but it's basically the same. You do most of your grooming before you bathe the dog. It's basically doing its nails, trimming its feet, brushing it out, cleaning out its ears, and then doing whatever you do in the tub, shampoo or dip. But most of the grooming procedures that you're gonna see, the most popular is this. You'll have more cockers in your shop 
than anything else. More cockers and poodles. Good girl, Freckles. Good girl.